extraterrestrial space aliens and UFOs, and they've been in the news a lot this, these past few days. As is known, numerous sightings of unidentified flying objects have been observed in the US, Canada, China, and several other skies of the world in the last 24 hours. From time immemorial, those of us who are ethereal, lovers of the inexplicable, have been shooting similar phenomena even now in China. As the folk song says, we experience the pleasure of searching for the unknown in all its glory. Now everything comes to us on a plate, and we laugh because instead of a plate, we, literally, we initially wrote piano. He said, I, I initially wrote piano instead of plate, and uh, I'm very afraid because maybe it will fall, wood after music. Now that has no value. It no longer has value because the researcher is invalidated, the research is invalidated, the research methods are invalidated, and the joy that comes from the whole project is invalidated. This joy migrated elsewhere since some people want to hide, but the joy won't let them. Okay, I'll try to be serious, the writer says, even though the whole thing is cheesy in and of itself. However, its results won't be funny at all for humanity, I suppose. So the time has come for the next social experiment after uh, what we've been going through the past few years, an experiment that will take full advantage of the primal fears of human nature, just like the first ones. This time, the fear of death is contained in an even bigger, more chaotic and scarier hole. It is called the fear of the unknown and includes the sense of the nothingness of the human species in relation to the overall universal of uh, space edifice. We have experienced something similar in our skin, and this writer is Greek, so he says, as Greeks, during the period of the, the uh, IMF memorandum, where the Greek people were desperate and preferred the hunger instead inside Europe to the uncharted waters outside of the old continent. Meanwhile, with the threat of dangers arriving through the waters of space, the elite of the planet will attempt to pass, quote-unquote, the next batch of inhumane measures on the backs of citizens as long as the latter continue to vote for ridiculous leaders paying the argument of the vote of uh, the dispensation is an initiation process, which prepares the people for the one and one only world government, the one world government of the globalists for better coordination, greater protection, more security against any space and not only invader. Because only in this way will humanity be able to sleep peacefully, the sleep of justice. Technology exists and functions as a vehicle to achieve and perpetuate the mental lethargy of humans, a technology of consciousness subjugated. For example, the harp system in Alaska, which bombards particles into the ionosphere to improve telecommunications. In fact, HARP emits str such strong electromagnetic fields that with the help of satellites, it can turn the sky into a huge screen where anyone can project whatever they like. In other words, uh, something like Project Bluebeam with holograph. Very soon on your screens, after all, the holographic projections are already a reality. Perhaps some wish to question my humility as to why I rule out of the, the existence of genuine extraterrestrials who come to visit us, of course, I'm not ruling out anything. In fact, as an astrobiologist who wants to respect himself, I maintain that we are Earthlings ourselves and are extraterrestrials, since according to Crick's theory of directed panspermia, formulated by the man who discovered the structure of his molecule DNA, the first cell, hence life, arrived on Earth from space. It has now been proven that inside meteorite shells can survive cosmic radiation and space cold, both complex organic compounds and biological macromolecules, the main components of the living cell, as well as living cells themselves. This belief that we are not alone in the universe was pervasive in all the philosophical schools of thought through ancient Greece Mitrodorus of Chios characteristically said, it is not possible for there to be only one ear of corn in a plane, but it is another this and another what is taking place now on our earth. 
Alien intelligence is one thing, and the existence of UFOs is another. Their modern defi definition of UAPs, hence unidentified aerial phenomena, what we call UFOs, he who equates UFOs with extraterrestrials is either out of touch or is consciously misinformed to achieve a specific goal. A UAP can quant qualitatively be anything from an atmospheric phenomenon, see ball lightning for example, to even a weather balloon or flares or satellites or drones or even the planet Venus. In my humble opinion, it's more likely that the sightings of this weather balloon are due to black programs, secret super technology of several superpowers and exploited as they see fit. A distinguished researcher from Director of Democritus in Athens, a personal friend, Lefteri Sagaras, Saragas, believes that these UAPs are nothing more than the remnants of an antediluvian civilization, not necessarily extraterrestrial, entering and exiting the Earth's atmosphere. And besides, given the fact that the solar system, quite a bit for farther than I would add, is not at all infested by intelligent extraterrestrial entities of the latter-day sightings are for, from genuine extraterrestrials, they must possess know-how and technology beyond human comprehension so that they can uh, travel in a relatively short time these enormous distances in the universe and indeed without their biological systems being destroyed from such large developing accelerations which will be exerted on any other of their organism. So, these flying machines are not shot down by any F-39s or MiGs-29s and Su-57. Likewise, such technology cannot remain hidden from the, us humans unless it's, uh, it may, its maker so desires. However, if they wanted something like this, the aliens would not indicate their presence with flashes and cracks in the air. The only thing they did not tell us is that the extraterrestrial craft challenged the Earth fighters to fight. Antidote in this case would be to take action. Tom Cruise as Maverick from top movie Top Gun 2, I get serious again, to come to the conclusion that such technologically and therefore mentally advanced beings would never deal with us and our planet. We don't even deserve their attention. It's like a car stopping on the highway, the driver getting out of the car, crossing into the opposite field and bending over a nest of cockroaches or ants to indicate his presence to them. Would any of us ever do such a thing? Unless, unless something much worse is going on. Unless these highly intelligent beings have already enslaved us without us even noticing. Perhaps they have already trapped us inside a human zoo without ever even being a, a, us being able to escape outside our solar system and observe observing our reactions. Welcome to the mundane reality. My compliments. This is by John Sarles, who is an astrobiologist, and uh, I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box.